to pay. We are going to... We are going to have some fun. You guys ready for some fun? All right. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to play a game here at Momentum tonight. And so without me explaining anything to you, I just, I just need five solid contestants tonight for this game. And so if you want to play the game tonight, and, and I'll just say this, the game is all about all about narrowing down where we're going because it's a secret where we're going on missions this summer. So we're going to, as you play this game, we will begin to cross off sections of the world map to narrow down where we are going. But I need five contestants tonight. Five contestants. Okay, I got Rocky and I got, I got Arthur and I'll take, I'll take Daniel and I need, I need two girls. I need some girls. Yeah, right there. Uh, Kate, Caitlin. Or, uh, Caitlin. And uh, I need another girl. Okay, yes, yes, come on up, come on up, yes, fantastic. We just, we gotta make sure we're, we're not so gender dominant here at Momentum, because men, men are just so awesome. You know, okay, just, you know, come, come around, I guess gather on the rug. So, um, this is, uh, we call this game the Wheel of Destiny. Everybody say it with me, Wheel of Destiny. Okay, and so what happens is, is uh, to spin the Wheel of Destiny, pay attention, it's very, very difficult, but, but uh, to spin the Wheel of Destiny, you've got to crank this lever, which is, um, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's powered through the ground here and through the, through the, uh, it's, it's with the cloud, really. The cloud is in the air. And, the, and, the, and so what happens is, is, is when you crank the lever, you spin the wheel on, on the digital wheel. So let's, let's give it a try. Boom. Oh, let's see what it lands on. Okay. Okay. Let's spin it again. Oh, there it goes. Let's spin it again. Uh, eat worms. Okay. Let's, let's, Okay, I spun it twice. I spun it twice, as you can see there. So what happens is, is when you spin the wheel of destiny, you, we got some op. Can we go through some of those options again? Can we go through some of those options again? So I'll spin. The, I'm gonna crank the, the thing here, and we're gonna spin the wheel of destiny. Same video, the same thing. I'll take. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so one of the options is you gotta dye your hair green. Okay, spin it again. Okay, there it goes. There it goes. Okay, sometimes you gotta eat worms. Right, let's do a couple more times. Boom. Let's do it again. I, I, I was a little dumb. Okay, it's gonna. Oh, got hair green again. So you don't, you don't, you don't know what it's gonna land on. Could be eat worms again. Oh, that's too bad. All right, let's spin it. Is that it? But there it goes. Sometimes it's a little shaky. Okay, there you get this. You get the thing. The wheel of destiny is very, it's very, it's very elusive. Punch. Rachel, let's take a look at our options here. This is what we're gonna do is you're gonna spin the wheel of destiny. You have to accomplish one of these options, okay? And one of them is punch Rachel, dye hair green, uh, punched by Rachel. That one's fun. Shave one eyebrow, pie in the face, shave your head, eat worms, swallow goldfish, chug hot sauce, or shave both your eyebrows. And so what happens is, is when you when you do the lever. The, 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 the wheel spins and whatever it lands on you have to do and once you do that then we will cross off a section we'll narrow it down we'll narrow it down you guys still good to question let's hear this hold on a second Rocky's I'm not shaving my eyebrows well that's up to the wheel of destiny Rocky not me okay okay who wants to spin the wheel first ladies first okay Rocky yes Rocky spin the wheel first and, and you'll spin the wheel It'll tell you what to do. Once you do it, we'll cross off a section of the, of the world map and we'll narrow it down here, all right? Okay, Rocky. Don't be so nervous, buddies. But, but everybody say, Wheel of Destiny! Pie in the face! Not so bad. Yes, we have a pie conveniently ready. Folks, okay, Carl. Uh, uh, go ahead and, uh, no, on the rug. Yeah, you put that around your neck, obviously. Obviously, you didn't put that around. <laughs> Let's do this. And there we go. It's the... All right, we'll have our lovely uh, assistant. You, you can go clean yourself up if you want to. We'll have our lovely assistant cross off a section of the world map to determine where we are not going as to narrow it down to where we are going. Oh. It's not Australia. It's not New Zealand or uh, some of those random islands over there, things like that. All right, who's next to spin the wheel of 
Destiny. Hey, all right. Uh, everybody say, Wheel of Destiny. What is it? Oh, pie in the face. Not so bad, not so bad. I'll tell you what, the chances of it landing on pie in the face twice are slim to none according to the digital wheel directions. You just stand on those uh, on that rug so we don't have to do much cleanup. Face the face the man with the pie. You can you can mouth open. She doesn't want that. She's not a whip! Ah! Wheel of uh, let me reset the, the wheel. Hold on a second. Okay, I reset it. Fantastic. Daniel, looks like you're kind of up next naturally where your body language is at. All right, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Here we go. Here we, got, we go. We got to cross off of something on the map. Hold on. Hold on. All of North America. Oh. Almost all of North America. Okay. Because we're our mission is here right now, right? We're always right here. Oh, confusing. It's very confusing. It's church world. All right, everybody say, Wheel of Destiny! Boom! Boom! There it goes, folks. Fire the face again! Again! And we've got another pie! Pie in the face! Just get him in the face. Don't even hesitate. There it is, folks. Oh! And take a towel. Well done, well done. All right, well this, done. This is a big one here. This is a big one. I'm going for it. What is it? Asia. Asia. Oh. oh. So Europe is still open. Europe is still open. Okay, put a smiley face in Europe. There it is. Thank you. Asia's gone. Sorry. All right. Arthur. Everybody say with me, Wheel of Destiny. <laughs> What are you like? Oh, come on! Hey, we got another pie ready to go! Another pie! What are the chances? Oh my gosh! <laughs> that is a solid, solid pie in the face. Well done. Uh, oh. Well done. So, sorry. His pants are tight. Sorry. Where, where should I cross off here? Just. Uh, uh, oh, whoa. Iceland. Iceland's gone. <laughs> Iceland and Greenland are gone. They're gone. They're gone. <laughs> Last but not least. Hold on. Hold on. How many? Okay. Wheel of destiny. Yes. <laughs> By the face! I'm beginning to think this is rigged. And we have another pie ready to go. Give it to her. Don't even hesitate and don't feel sorry for her. There oh, it is. shoot. Oh, no. Don't you wish her. Where are you? Here we go. Europe's gone. And. What? And half of South America is gone. Oh! That's all I'm giving. That's all I'm giving. Come on, people. What a fantastic game of Wheel of Destiny. We're to give it up for our wonderful contestants tonight. That's what I'm talking about. Well, actually, this game was just a lot of fun. And uh, I'll let you guys, I'll give you guys a bit of a history. Um, our church has been doing missions for a number of years now. We really have been all over the world. And uh, we've got, um, what we want to play for you now is our actual reveal video for you guys. We're actually where we are going. Um, this does narrow it down, but uh, um, if I can get the stage to get to get clear off, because I'll, I'll kind of explain some things and we can clear the stage off. But, um, you know, we've been doing missions for a lot of years now. And uh, we take our mission trips really seriously. And um, I'll just say this, you know, when, when the video plays, I just want you guys to be cheering when they announce the different places that we're going this summer. Everyone's invited. Everyone can come. And uh, we just, we, we just want to just say we're excited about where we're going on missions this year. And this video is just going to pump you up and get you excited about 
about where we've been and where we're going and what we're doing. So why don't you guys take, just a, watch this video and have a great time tonight, everybody. We're going to Ghana! Woo! Missions revealed. We are so excited. Thank you for your hard work and taking a pie in the face to reveal these awesome clues. Uh, we are so excited to do missions and go on missions, and that's what this whole night has been about. If it's your first time here, we just want to say welcome. I see some new faces. So glad you're here. If you've come here before, this is a great night to be here because we are just going to get on board with our global God and see what he's doing, not only 
here, but internationally. Who's gone on missions with us before? Come on. That is awesome. I mean, your voices seem a little bit quiet. Let me, let me harness that passion of yours. Who here has gone on missions with us before? Come on. Well, that is awesome. Well, tonight with my message, I want to give you a little more information on why we're going to Ghana in Detroit. And I just want to get us on board with God's global heart and get us on board with why we do missions and why we are choosing to go. So I'm so excited. This service has been a little bit abnormal. It's been a little bit different. We don't start every service off tribally if you're here for the first time. Uh, sometimes Becca her, she's kind of tribal in general, but not typically are we always tribal, so don't worry about it. But let's just start this sermon off with some prayer, make sure we're all on the same page. I heard some people murmuring, saying this wheel was rigged. I just want to rebuke that, and anybody that's coming against us, it's just a sheer coincidence that we had five pies ready and five pies selected. So let's pray. Dear Father, we come here today, and we are so honored to serve you and be with you, Lord. Father, we, uh, man, we just want to enter into your heart, your global heart, Father. And I pray that you give us a, a, a global vision and a global uh, perspective, Father, the way you see this earth, Father, and that we, we would see that you're bigger than one town or one family, Father, but that you truly want us to be the light of the world, Father. And just like even we saw in that drama, Father, that you can change nations, Father, that you can change individuals, and you can change hearts, and we just want to partner with you tonight, Father. I pray for all of us in this place, Lord. I pray for those who don't know you in this place. I pray that they would find you tonight, Father, and that your name would be lifted up in the name of Jesus. Momentum said, amen. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Pradeepan, and we are going to Detroit and Ghana, and some of you might be wondering, why are we going to Ghana? And it's awesome. Last year, we went to Honduras with Missions Me. Who, who went to Honduras? And that, that was just crazy. We preached to thousands of people daily. And we actually ended our trip by preaching to a stadium of 35,000 people. And we saw so many people give their lives to Jesus. So many families that were destroyed. You know, Honduras is such a dangerous country that our government, the American government actually said, we don't advise anybody to go to Honduras because it's so dangerous. But even in that environment, we saw God move in a miraculous way. And so we are partnering with Missions Me, again, and Dominic Russo Ministries, and we're going to Ghana. And what they are doing is they've endeavored to build 100 wells in 100 days for people who do not have clean water. And I'm so excited about this because I just want to read some of the highlights from this trip. Do you guys know that 40 billion hours of labor is wasted every year to carry in water over a long distance just for survival? I mean, did you know that lack of clean water is bond to poverty? There's like some 2,000 people a day that die simply because of clean water water issues. And so we're partnering with them because we see a need and we want to take a lead in partnering with them to bring in a solution. Amen. And so we're going to, we're going to help them. You know, the diseases from unclean water kill more people every year than all the forms of violence, including war. That is incredible. And we, we just, we just think that's not acceptable. You know what I mean? We just don't think as people that can help a country, that can make a difference, we don't think it's acceptable that people are struggling for clean water. It's just ridiculous. And so we are so glad that there's an organization that we can partner with to help people have basic needs and survive. And so you might be wondering, what are we going to do in Ghana? Why should I be excited? You guys really should be excited. We're going to be part of us personally opening 50 wells in 50 African villages. We're going to help families gain access to clean water for the first time. We're going to minister to tons of people doing street ministries, school-wide assemblies, and even do church services. And if you guys have never gone on a missions, meet, uh, missions trip, it's incredible. We went last year with Honduras, and they hook you up with ministry opportunities. You guys will be preaching. You guys will be sharing your testimony more than you know how to. You'll just be like, my throat cannot speak anymore. You guys will lay hands on the sick. You will see them recover. You will just 
begin great friendships with people, it will be awesome. Who's excited about Ghana? I mean, this is just an incredible opportunity. And I'm going to talk about more of the heart of this, but I just want to give you kind of an idea of what we're doing. And the second trip we want to do is we're going to Detroit. And Detroit, as you know, is, uh, yeah, we're going to Detroit. <laughs> Come on. Detroit, as you know, has seen better days. And uh, some stats I just want to read to you is 60% of all children in Detroit are living in poverty. This is 40 miles away from us. That's unacceptable. The city, as you might have known, has been de decreed bankrupt. A city that used to be one of the top cities in the world. One third of the city is abandoned. One third. Who's explored some of these abandoned buildings in Detroit? There's just a lot of need. There's a lot of issues. Gangs, drugs, and prostitution fill the streets. I, I was just talking with this organization where they moved from California to Detroit specifically to stop sex trafficking because it's such an issue. People are being sold as sex slaves in Detroit, in our backyard. Um, it's going to be it's crazy. The crime rate in Detroit is five times higher than anywhere else in the country in our backyard. The murder rate is 11 times higher than New York City. And, and check this out, even the police tell people to enter Detroit at your own risk. Isn't that sad? I mean, we are God's people. We are the light of the world. We believe that God can restore hearts and families. But right down the road, police say, enter at your own risk. Risk. So what will we do in Detroit? We'll do some community projects. We'll help restore churches. We'll be part of a church plant, which is pretty sweet. We'll be conducting services. We'll be doing food ministry, passing out food to the poor and ministering, and also doing street ministry. So this is exciting. So we have two options. One is a little bit further than the other, but I believe this is us partnering with God's heart. God in the Great Commission, he says, to go to, you know, Judea, which was really close, Samaria, which is a little bit further, and then the uttermost parts, the ends of the earth. And so I really feel like we're doing that. We're ministering in Highland Township. Anybody love Highland Township? Anybody love Highland Township? <laughs> I know I do. Just sing that back at me. Everybody just sing Highland Township. I would sing that a lot more epic, but I have bronchitis currently. True story but I'm not contagious. I'm on the antibiotics. Hello. And so anyways, uh, so Highland Township, and then we're going to Detroit, which is like our Judea, you know, Judea, and then our Samaria is Detroit, and then we're going to the uttermost parts of the earth. But, you know, we, I'm just going to jump into my sermon right now, but I, I'm just so excited about these missions things. I mean, let's give God another round of applause for these opportunities we get to be a part of. And now I'm just going to cast a little bit of vision and, and share a little bit more of the heart, and then we're going to respond in worship. And I believe God is going to stir in our hearts, and he's going to call us to go places that maybe we never thought we would go because we thought we'd just spend our whole lives in Highland Township. Yeah. So anyways, we've been in this preaching series. What, what have we been preaching about? We've been preaching about living the... That's right. Let's say that one more time. Living the... So we've been talking about how right now we can live the dream that God's plan and his destiny for our life isn't just about, you know, one day we'll be doing great things or one day we'll have our dream job or one day we will change the world or accomplish something. But we here at Momentum really believe that we can live the dream right now, that today isn't just a stepping stone for a brighter future, but today is a beautiful canvas that God can paint his masterpiece with. And so we believe that it's not just a stepping stone. You know, our journey, our time together here at Momentum, we are living the dream right now, amen? We're having fun. We're partying. We're doing God things. We are, you know, we are just making a difference right where we are at. We're living the dream right now. But as I was, you know, preparing for this message and thinking about Missions Rush, I was like, you know, God, give me a dream. God, you know, share your plan with me. What do you want me to do right now? And I, I just feel like the Lord is saying to us, you know, you know, you have dreams, you have desires, but do you guys ever ask, what is my dream for my life? I feel like the Lord is begging for someone to ask him, what is your dream, God, for you? What do you want to do with your existence? God, what brings you joy? Has anybody ever asked that, just being real honest? Or are we so concerned 
with our own destiny that we forget about the one we say we love. You know, I'm married to Amritha, but if I, I never asked her, what, what is your desire? What interests you? I would probably be seen as a selfish husband. But because I care for her, I'm like, hey, babe, where do you want to eat tonight? You want to go to Sushi Zen? Or do you want to go to Heartland Kona in Highland Township? Actually, it's in Heartland Township. Bronchitis is leaving. I'm getting my range back. All right. <laughs> But because I love God, and I know that you guys love God, but maybe you haven't had someone tell you that you're okay to ask God what he's thinking or feeling. Maybe you've never asked that question, but that's what this whole sermon is about. God, yes, we want to live the dream, but God, what is your dream? God, what keeps you up at night? What gets you up in the morning? I don't know if you sleep or not, but what, what gets you excited, Lord? What makes you pleased and happy? And I was just like, man, we are a God party, an 18 plus God party, but what makes God want to party? Because some of you guys are like, man, my dream would be uh, to be a millionaire. Hello, and if someone just gave me a million dollars, I'd be partying. Who would party if someone gave you a million dollars? Man, who would be partying if someone just gave you gas money? <laughs> let's be real let's be real but I'm like God what makes you party because we're an 18 plus God party here in momentum that is our identity and if we're a God party let's make God party you know what I'm saying let's make God excited let's make God just like thrilled that this is amazing and this is his group so I'm like what makes you rejoice, Father? And I, I came upon this scripture, and I want us to let this set our expectations for tonight. And I want to tell you something, that the Momentum God Party, you know how we've been talking about this is the party that will save the world? We talked about the ecclesia, how we can be part of the difference in the world. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out our podcast, I am Momentum.com. But we are a party that can save the world. But I want to drop this into your hearts right now, that this party can grow so wild. Who's ever been to a party that's just grown out of control, that it just started influencing things that you didn't expect it to influence? Well, I believe that momentum right now, right here, if you can have the faith to believe with me, that this party can grow so influential and so powerful that we can make all of heaven party with us. Who can believe that with me? Did you even know that there can be rejoicing and partying in heaven? Who here with me wants to be part of something so big here on earth that all of heaven is like, I got to be part of that. I want to rejoice right now in my harp. <laughs> I don't know if they have harps there, but man, this cloud is boring. I want to dance. I want to put all these clouds together. And we'll just have like a heaven foam party. <laughs> like who wants to be part of a party that influences heaven like that? Come on, where are my party people at? So am I even being biblical right now, or am I just trying to hype you up? I don't know. Let's read the scripture and find out. Let's go to Luke 15, 4 through 7. So this is an example Jesus is talking about, and he goes, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. And check this out. Can we make all of heaven rejoice? Verse 7 gives us the answer. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more. What? more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Man, this is exciting. Some translations say all of heaven rejoices when one person knows Jesus. Isn't that amazing? That what we're doing right here in Highland Township, right in between a Christmas tree farm and an apple orchard, <laughs> We can make all of heaven rejoice. That is amazing. That is what we're a part of. We are part of something huge. We're part of something amazing. And some of you guys live so small. You're just concerned about the next class. Are you concerned about the next piece of drama with a friend? But I want to tell you what. If you just feel like you're so small in this world that you can be part of making the entirety of heaven take notice of what God is doing right here, you can make all of heaven party. 
And so I'm like, God, what brings you joy? What is your desire? And I'm like reading these verses, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3-4. through 4. This is good and pleases, so what pleases you, God? And pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. All of heaven rejoices when people get to know Jesus and become his follower. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to what? Perish, but everyone to come to repentance. I love this because I feel like these verses give us a better perspective of God because, you know, we talked about how we sometimes view God as the anti-party God, like people having a good time. That's not right. Oh, my goodness, these people aren't, you know, they're smiling and laughing. That's not good. Or, oh, I feel guilty that I'm having so much fun. I should be, you know, crying in the presence of the Lord. That's what he really wants. No, God rejoices, and he doesn't want anyone to perish. In fact, he wants everybody to come to know him. And when they do, what does he do? He parties. Man, and for some of you, that's just like, mind-blowing. You're like, oh my gosh, God wants to party? God wants to rejoice? It's true. It's true. That's why we're so passionate about telling people about Jesus, because how many of you guys have seen someone come to know the Lord, and you're just like, oh my goodness. You see, like a lot of us, you know, I don't know if you're Christian or not in here, but I know for me, I wasn't always Christian, but when I became Christian, like I was not lost. I was no longer walking like a blind person. You know, where I was dealing with suicide and, you know, depression, and I was dealing with just so many issues, you know, violence, getting 40 detentions my freshman year of high school, all that kind of stuff. I was just so broken. And then I found Jesus, and my life completely transformed. And I, I was just like, I need to tell people about Jesus. And I'd see my family come to know him, and I would tell my friend, you know, hey, Jesus can really change your life. I know you're depressed. I know you're broken, but this really is an answer. I remember seeing my friend Adam. He got saved, and that joy, I just had a party. I just had a, just had to scream. Anybody scream in your cars when you're really excited? I do that sometimes. Not when anybody's looking, but some, sometimes I also get angry when nobody's looking, and I just, like, need to let out a roar. Anybody, where are my angry roars at? No, nobody's going to admit it. All right, I see it. Wow. Wow. I'm kind of scared. I'm kind of scared. So I'm just thinking, man, God, what is your dream? And when we look at the scriptures, we see that God's desire is that none shall perish and that God is pleased when people get to know him and that God will rejoice over one person who repents and gets a new life, a new start, than over all of us that are just keeping on going. Don't you guys want to please God? Don't you want to make him smile? Don't you want to make him rejoice? Don't you want him to have fun? Because God has changed my life. And I don't want it to be all about me. He's my lover. He's amazing. He's our father. He's everything. And if he's not happy, man, I feel like I'm a really bad, really bad lover of God. <laughs> and that's not what I want. And so Jesus, and going through this mission, he actually calls us something. And I'm just throwing a lot of scripture at you, but I'm trying to build a platform for this whole missions experience. But Jesus calls us something, knowing how much it pleases the Father when people become lovers and followers of Jesus Christ. And in this mission, Jesus says to the disciples, and really to us, he says in a book called Matthew, he says in the fifth chapter, in the 14th verse, he says, you are are the world's light. And he's talking about Christians. He's talking about us. He says, you are the world's light, a city on a hill, glowing in the night for all to see. Don't hide your light. Let it shine for all. Let your good deeds flow, glow for all to see, so that they will praise your heavenly Father. I love this verse because Jesus is trying to give us a tip on how to please our Heavenly Father. He's saying you are a light. You are meant to glow. You are meant to shine. And I believe momentum, that is the same thing God is saying to us, that us as Christians, as lives that have been changed, momentum, you are a light. 
You are meant to shine. You no longer should hide your light. Man, hiding a light is not very, it's not a good endeavor, especially when someone's trying to show off and God's trying to show off through us being the light. He wants the darkness to be eradicated. And there's a lot of darkness in this world. How many of you guys have just looked at people and you're like, there's just more to life? There's more than what you're living for. You know, you, you're struggling with this little piece of darkness, but if only you could see how glorious God is, if only you could see a light, the little piece of truth or hope that I found it, everything would be different for you. You know, I remember when I was in high school, I, I was kind of a pyro. I like to burn things. Does anybody like to burn things? I mean, even right now, I see this, come on, even right now, I see this candle, and I'm just like, I wonder if I could burn Stephanie Barber's hair. Like, I wonder, how much hairspray does she have in there? <laughs> None. Good. And I'm just like thinking, man, I would like to burn stuff. Anybody just love to burn stuff? You're just like, fire, fire. I want to burn. Some of you guys, like, something's rising up in you right now. <laughs> and anyway, I remember I wanted to show off through the power of fire. I, I remember, you know, my full name is Pradeepan G. Manohar and Sivaratnam. Okay? Yeah, you can cheer for that all day. And uh, so I, I remember I was in Coon Rapids, Minnesota, and I had this crazy idea. And uh, I was like, man, me and my friends are hanging out. We, we like to set things on fire. What if we went to the busiest part of Apple Valley, Minnesota, and in the intersection, what if we spelt my full name? That's a long name. What if we spelt my full name in gasoline? And so we did. We grabbed some, you know, like lawnmower jugs, whatever those things are called, of gallons of water, or, I mean, gasoline. And uh, we went into the intersection. It was pretty late, so there wasn't a lot of traffic. And we just, like, P. I mean, and the, the, the first letter was like, just doing our scales. And uh, <laughs> so all the way to Sivaretna, Pradeepan, so P-R-A-D-E-E-P-A-N-J-E-E-V-A-M-A-N-O-H-A-R-N-S-E-E-V-A-R-A-T-N-A-M. So P to the R, D, W, E, P, A, N to the J to the W, V, Manohar, and Sivaretna. So that's my name. Come on. And so we spelt out my whole name in gasoline because sometimes you just want to show off with light. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just got to show off and let the world burn. <laughs> about to go off a real, in a real creepy tangent. Don't want to do that. <laughs> so we spelt out my name, and then we lit it in, as you expect. Down the whole intersection is my name in fire, and I am just loving it. I want the whole world to know my name is Pradeep Jeevanohar Sivarana, and I don't care who knows. And, uh, you know, I don't know how we didn't think this through, but cars drive on the road. So cars start coming, and imagine this. Get your mindset into the mindset of someone driving at, like, 2 a.m. You're, like, tired. Okay, I'm going to put my signal on. Mother of bro! <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you do? Do you go in reverse? Do you turn around? Do you drive through the fire? <laughs> what do you do? Do you try to figure out, is that a name or a location or a paragraph? Like, what do you do? <laughs> Man, we, I got so many fire stories. It's, it's just crazy. But I just wanted to let the world know my name. I wanted to show off. But could you imagine how frustrated I would have been if, you know, I lit this fire and then my friend, like, all of a sudden had a lid in the perfect shape of my name and he just covered it. 
I'd be like, first of all, I'm really impressed that you have that lid, but why are you covering my name? This is a light. This is a fire. This is for the world to see. Why are you covering it? (laughs) And I feel like with us, God calls us the light of the world, and he's like, why do you let your light be hidden? Why do you just stay in your safe circles of friendship? Why is the only time you talk about Jesus when you're in church? Why is the only time you can talk about God is when you're with other Christians. The whole world was meant to see the light of God in your life. Why won't you show it off? Why won't you share your testimony? Why won't you tell people about Jesus? Why won't you go on missions this year? Amen, anybody? (laughs) Come on. That's a good illustration. I don't care who you are. Come on. Man, I feel like God's saying, You know, if you really want to please me, if you really want to see my dreams come true, let the light that I made you to be shine. Let the light that I made you to be shine. You know what, guys? I don't know if you're with me, but I want to make all of heaven party. I want my light to shine so bright that heaven is like... That's my jam. That's totally, I just, you know when a music comes on and you're like, I I just got to dance to that song. Like you're, you know, you're having a cappuccino, you're just trying to relax, but but then someone plays like, you know, (laughs) insert the blank, can't touch this, and you're like, oh man, can't touch this. Man, if I didn't have bronchitis, you guys would have had a 30 minute dance show right there. (laughs) <laughs> but don't hide your light. You know, in, I, I love the scripture, and I, I was reading this, and I was like, man, this reminds me of a, another scripture. And, and you guys might remember the book of Genesis, but it's the first book that we find in our Bible, the scriptures. But in the book of Genesis, we see that God creates the heavens and the earth. But the earth, when he made it, it was in complete darkness. But then he says something really interesting, and, and he creates a way for people and humanity and animals to see. And he says, let there be let there be light. And then it's awesome. He, he calls these things into existence. He says, let there be light. And it says, and there was light because he called it light. And in this passage that we see Jesus, he's calling us the light of the world. And I feel like the spirit of God is saying to each and every one of us in your life, let there be light. And for some reason, we're different than our son in that we disobey. We hide it. We don't always become the light that God has called us to be. But I remember times, I remember when I, I went on one of my first missions trips. It was awesome. I went to this country called Lamu. It's in Africa right over there. See that? And so uh, <laughs> I, went, I went to this country called Lamu, and uh, I think I've shared this story before, but it was a let there be light kind of moment because this place was known as Second Mecca. Muhammad's great-grandson, you know, like from... Islam, he was actually buried there. So they had shrines upon shrines around this, you know, this the sacred artifact for that faith. And I remember we would go prayer walking every time there was an Islamic call to prayer. And every time we would pray, they would have guards around us, Muslim guards, to make sure we wouldn't do anything wrong. And they, they forbid us from preaching in any of these schools on this little island. And actually, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever been to Muslim countries, but there's like a call to prayer, and there's loudspeakers that go over the whole city. So everybody can hear the prayer. And the imam, the, the religious leader, he would, he would do his prayer, and then he would warn people not to listen to us Americans and don't listen to us talk, to, talk about Jesus. He was trying to hide our light. And uh, I remember being so discouraged, and we partnered with this missionary, and he said, man, I've been here for three years, and we haven't, we've only seen like one person give their life to Jesus. We've tried to plant a church. We try to get this building, but they won't let us. We try to preach in the schools. They won't let us. And there's such desperation, such darkness. And I, I remember just like people did not want us there. They didn't like us. And we're like, God, we want to shine our light. We want to make a difference, but we don't feel like we really are. And so we would just pray. We prayed for one day, 
Lord, let there be light. We prayed for another day. Lord, let there be light, Father. You know, because we, we started talking with people and we found out like in this school, all these kids were getting, you know, molested and the moms are complaining and it was just incredibly dark and there's so much pain. Moms crying to us about what's happening to their children and we're just praying and we're like, Lord, let there be light. You've called us to be the light, Father. And so we're on this mission trip because we want to make a difference. We want to make heaven rejoice. But we just felt like, what can we do? You know, we're, we don't speak their language. We don't know Swahili that well. We don't know any of these things. We don't know the culture. Father, what are we doing here? But we just decided to take advantage of that. We're just like, Lord, Father, we pray for these kids. We pray for these families. I pray that you give us an opportunity to preach, Father. Let there be light, just like you commanded there to be light, and just like you've called us to be the light, Lord, let there be light. And one day, I don't know how this happened, and Andrew, why don't you come up here? I don't know how this happened, but man, this guy called us, called the, the, the missionary national who lived there, and he said, oh my goodness, I don't know how this has happened, but they just asked us to preach and share the gospel in a school assembly. <laughs> And we're like, what in the world? We've been here a week, and we have not been able to preach one time. And uh, we go there, we preach the gospel, give an altar call, and I'm not even kidding you. We preach boldly. People are hiding, looking in through the windows. They don't want to be caught, but it was a full house inside with the kids, adults around the entrances. And we give an altar call, and I'm telling you what, as we pray, let there be light, man, in that dark, dark place, somehow a light appeared. And people, one by one, began giving their life to the Lord, coming up to the altar and saying, we want Jesus. We want hope. We want a new chance at life. And people began to come up to the front and we started praying for them and crying. People, we didn't even pray for this, but they just started getting healed. And it was amazing. And people started getting filled with the Spirit. And it, it was incredible. And God did an incredible thing. And just like, you know, we, we prayed and just like we asked, God's light began to shine in the darkness. And when we chose not to hide our light anymore, we saw that we could be a part of making heaven party, making God's dream come true. We were living the dream. And man, we have a part to play. We have an opportunity to do this very thing. Lord, let there be light in Ghana. We have a chance to live the dream, live God's dream in Ghana, in Detroit. And in a little bit, I'm going to ask you guys to ask the Lord and let him speak to you. And we're just going to say, Lord, we want to shine our light. Lord, we want to make your dreams come true. But I, I want you to hear from someone besides me. And Andrew actually went to Lamu after me. And it was incredible. Andrew, why don't you come up here? And Andrew has actually told me that after that trip, I don't, I don't know, did you have another testimony in mind? plenty of testimony. But tell them what happened, because he actually went to Lamu the year after I went there, this island off of Africa. And when I went there, there was no church building or anything. There was no receptance to the gospel. But why don't you kind of conclude that story and then share another testimony of partnering with us in missions, all right? Let's give it up for Andrew. Sure, well, um, we, we had heard a lot from, from this team that went before about Lamu, and they were just, they were, they were saying, this, this place is depressed, this place is demonically possessed, there's, there's so much darkness in this place, like Preepin was saying, and so we were, we were really prepared for that. We were, we were prayed up, and we were ready to just kind of experience this really dark, depressed, hurting place when, when we got there. And uh, I remember we had to take a, we had to take a boat to get there, and so we're just, we're praying as we ride this boat to the island and uh, I remember getting off of this thing walking to the walking to the place where we stayed and, and I mean it's just this it's just this desert village and um, but we never really quite experienced that that darkness or that depression that we been so prepared for and so th as the as the trip goes on you know the week we, we would begin talking to the villagers living there we would we were going out and we just we saw none of it we saw we saw people who were you could tell were kind of breaking through to 
almost almost like this place was was positive, was happy, and uh, and and uh, we we were just we were just amazed uh, uh, by this because we were like we were expecting it to be so dark. I remember even asking this pastor, Pastor Pastor Thuku, why we were so expecting this place to be so dark and demonic, and they told us all these stories about about how bad this place is, and he said, well. Ever since that team came last year, the island began to turn around. And we just, we just began to see God move in this place. That church that had no one there, there was, there was, I think, close to 30 people there, praying in tongues, praying over people to be healed, praying for, praying for this, this city, for this place, for this second Mecca for, for uh, Islam. Uh, and in fact, the last, the last thing I remember after leaving this island, um, Pastor Thuku, who is this missionary, has been there for, I think, five years now. Uh, as we were leaving, one of the, the head imams on that island asked Pastor Thuku to come to his house and pray for his son, who was struggling with drugs and, and demon possession and, and just stuff. So this imam, who was, you know, had kind of a grip of that island, if you, if you can imagine, he was asking... God, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to come and be the light in his own household as we were leaving. That was amazing. Thanks, Andrew. That's awesome. Man, I just, I just love that, and I, I wanted Andrew to share that because we're just normal guys. I mean, we were in college at the time, and we just said, Lord, let there be light. Why? Because we love you, Father. We want to make your party an awesome party. You know, we want to make you rejoice. We want to make you happy. Father, we want your dreams to come true. And I believe right here in Momentum, God is raising up some people that aren't just going to be selfish in their faith. But they're saying, maybe you're saying right now, man, I, I just, I want to make God happy. I want to go on missions. Or I, I want to help spread the light of the gospel. And man, I just want to tell you, a great opportunity for you to do that is by going on missions with us. By letting this party go international. By letting this party truly change the world in Ghana and Detroit. And we're going to create an opportunity. We're going to have packets out there that you can have that will give you more information on the details of when we're going and what it will cost and some more testimonies of what exactly it will look like. But what I want us to do right now is I want us to just say we're open. Lord, we're open to go. Father, we're open to shine a light for your glory. And so what I want us to do right now is just bow our heads. Let's make this a moment where God can speak to us and he can stir our hearts. Some of you in this place are thinking, I want to be the light that God has called me to be. Some of you in this place are saying, I've been hiding my light, but I want to be open to letting it shine like it was always meant to shine. Ask the Lord to speak to you. Ask the Lord, Lord, should I go? Father, do you want me to go on missions? And I'm not going to make you raise your hand. I'm not going to make you make a commitment right now. So I want to encourage you guys to let the Lord speak to you as we go into this time of worship. Let him speak to you about where you should go, whether you should go to Ghana or Detroit or how you can let your light shine right now. But I believe he will speak to you. Will you follow Jesus? Will you follow his voice? Will you decide to give him your all and stop hiding your light? So we're going to go into a time of worship right now. just want to let you know that these altars are open. You can stand up or sit down. But let's make this a reverent place where God can speak to us and we can worship his name.